Hello, my name is Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. My guest today is Sunit Patel. Sunit is our Chief Actuary. Welcome, Sunit. Hi, Tracy. Great to be here. So, Sunit, we had to advise clients on their 2021 rates and employee contributions for their medical plans in like late summer, early fall of 2020, when we were squarely in the middle of the pandemic. Now that we have a better view of the actual claims experience for 2020, what impact did the pandemic have on those healthcare cost projections? So when we look at 2020, and to your point, we have almost all the data, December data is still coming in. Uh, It turns out that the COVID uh, impact was actually positive, and I know that sounds odd to say, but it ended up that for most clients, they saw costs that came in at a lower level than they would have expected pre-COVID. Some specifics around that are that deferred care, so people either canceled care or deferred it, uh, that ended up lowering cost about 8%, uh, but the offset to that was costs related to COVID, so for COVID testing and treatment, which was about 3%. And so that netted to about a 5% reduction versus whatever expectations would have been. And for most clients, expectations were, say, a 6% trend from 19 into 20. And so instead of 6%, they saw 1%. Of course, there was a lot of volatility from client to client. So we saw some clients in excess of that and others underneath it. But that's what the numbers look like on average. So with that additional information, would you have changed anything about our approach to trend and setting rates for 2021? So when it came to setting rates in the summer of last year for 2021, the approach that we took was to use pre-COVID data. So that would have meant looking at historical experience through February of 2020 that hadn't been touched by COVID, projecting it forward, using a trend rate. And then trying to understand what the COVID impacts might be in the projection period, so in 2021. So that basic approach was sound and is still something that uh, would be valid to use even in retrospect. I think what would have changed are some of the assumptions. So we're learning more about secondary impacts of COVID as an example. The number of people who've been diagnosed uh, with chronic conditions, screenings, they never return to a normalized level level, even by the end of the year. And because of that, we're thinking it may put more cost pressure onto 2021 costs. That's just one example. Of course, there's a lot we still don't know about 2021, including vaccination rates, when we might reach herd immunity, what the impact of these different strains will be. So the devil's in the details, but the methodology would probably remain the same. Okay. Well, that's super interesting. And so um, while I have you, I think, you know, the one thing that everybody would want to know is, you know, as our chief actuary and keeping an eye on costs, what is your best advice for anybody joining us that is thinking about refreshing their cost management strategy? So I think as they think about cost management strategies, now is a great time. Last year, uh, there were tailwinds because COVID at the end of the day reduced the budgets and the costs for many employers. When we looked at our book of business, uh, it was about a 5% decrease, meaning if you were expecting a 6% increase in costs from 2019 to 2020, clients on average, so more than 1%. And I will stress that that was on average and that some clients saw differences you know, that were materially higher or materially lower, but given on average the favorable environment and uh, the concerns, just the health concerns, there was probably less done in terms of cost containment than in prior years. So as we look forward, I see companies uh, doubling down and really focused because the risk is really to the upside for surprises in terms of cost, meaning instead of, you know, Budgets being adequate, we believe that the risk is skewed a little bit to cost being and coming in higher than budget. So given that, what we're seeing in terms of employers and their strategies, one is in the uh, provider space 
uh, looking at networks and other strategies just in terms of value base. And some of that relates to activities driven in part by COVID, specifically provider consolidation. So we believe that, you know, given increased interest in providers consolidating as a result of cash flow and other issues during the pandemic, uh, that can cause a short-term pressure in terms of unit cost trends looking forward. Thanks, Sunit. That's great advice. And everybody, you heard it here first from Sunit. Now is the time to double down on your cost management strategies. So thanks so much, Sunit, for being here. And next time, I hope you'll join us for a discussion around diversity, equity, and inclusion strategies and how you can support them with your benefit programs. See you next time.